Hi, hello students. Welcome to SPV Education World. Together, we create a better world. If you are not yet subscribed, you can subscribe to our channel, friends, so that you can get all the topics that are which were you, whatever required for your all your competitive exams. If you are interested to contribute to this education channel and you want to grow this as a bigger initiation, kindly you can support uh, through Paytm donation contributions, my dear friends. Okay, now we shall see here. How to learn through SPV Education World. If you are new to SPV Education World, then learn this, friends. If you are watching it new, subscribe to the video and share it with your friends because it is the main initiative with which, which we had. I am SP Rajan taking classes in four languages, Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, English, to the, all the rural people to help each and every person in the nation. So kindly share so that it may reach to many because you are the only persons who can help and grow each other if you need me to improve anything please kindly comment so that i'll improve myself also watch our playlist whatever the course that is required for you kindly watch our playlist so that you get an idea of what are all the uh, courses and competitive exams that are required for your preparations all the new job notifications okay whatever the things you can find here is new job notification will be explained by me and syllabus and prospectives of the job salary everything will be detailed explained by me and the course classes will be also provided which means the same syllabus will be explained with separate topic dealt clearly regarding is upsc abpsc tnpsc ssc banking as any competitive exam everything is dealt here and this is our channel thanks for supporting already cross thousand subscribers because it's a great support by you so that we can develop more and take greater initiations okay now we shall see here i had given as our flag has four colors which means three colors and center wheel will be in other colors so four colors the, in the same way I'm, i had made four language classes with four color coding so don't get confused the thumbnails will be if it is saffron or red it will be telugu white means hindi green means english and the same thing blue means tamil so the four color coding can be present over here friends now as we see now onwards whatever class starts we start with a motivational quotes see whatever the thing you need to succeed you need to focus only your focus can bring you the success so to be focused what does that mean follow one course until success which means you make you plan your success or whatever the thing you are planning to succeed in your life or any exam you are writing you just plan you after planning you stick to the one course which means one material now information overload is a big issue for many students so you stick to one material one technique one system so that you will be easily succeeding so just focus on it that's it okay friends now we had seen the history of ancient india and that red syllabus i'll go for a quick revisions here ancient indian history we had seen uh, literary sources archaeological source of prehistoric age where we have seen all the divisions of the human lives and how they had survived from the beginning stages and so it how it was subdivided paleolithic age which means the old stone age and their lifestyle people nomadic it is further divided into three parts the tools they had used and sites that were present and everything we had seen middle upper paleolithic and paleolithic culture so on culture and aculean culture so one is in northwest of india and aculean is southern part of india also we had seen mesolithic mesolithic stone age which is a transition zone between paleolithic and neolithic and their society rural and pottery they used arts domestication of animals neolithic age we had seen then a new stone age basic society settlements and revolutions neolithic revolution tools regional neolithic agriculture potteries they had used and also arts ornaments burials that had been and what are all the locations where we got the evidences of the neolithic age and major sites that were present and also we are seeing the chalcolithic age chalcolithic means copper plus stone age and the basic social basics of the chalcolithic age societies and their livelihood and settlements of the well-being and also we had seen the ornaments used implement trade religious practices agriculture burials and what are all the way they had life society culture has been evolved during the chalcolithic period and which are all the regions what are all the evidence that we had got during the chalcolithic age and then we had come over to fourth class that is indus valley civilization where we had gone through the parallel civilization that had been flourished during the same period when the indus valley civilization was ongoing okay now we had seen the chronology discovery etymology origin and geographical extent of the
Indus Valley Civilization and we had now we are, also we had seen the materials used, building types, roads, drainage pattern and agriculture and domestication of the Indus Valley Civilization people and political organization and recreational activities that they had been involved in much more entertainment and these things, transports, goods, all the trade and networks, barter systems, occupations and also pottery they had developed during the Indus Valley Civilization and what are all the ornaments, mostly bronze was dominant and also we saw the sources of raw materials from where they had got and also the new inventions that the Indus Valley Civilization had given to this society where we live now, for example, buttons, dice and measurement system we had seen what are all the mother gods and worship, there is no religion but still they worship some of the nature gods that and we had seen them in clear and also the burials, uh, what are all the life after death and also the what are the writing and scripts of Harappan and Indus Valley civilization that things we had seen clear in the script writing styles and also the we had seen how the Indus Valley civilization had came to an end which is a greater example for us our modern lifestyle where we are close to our end of the life because of end of the century and end of the life because already we are also exploiting our natural resources heavily okay friends now subscribe to our channel if you are not you watch previous videos that is the revision i had shown now you watch it clearly and come to this class okay my dear friend here we see the vedic culture vedic culture means what it is where see from the beginning stone age and Indus Valley civilization and so on where the vedas literature started from vedic age so we see everything in clear it is me sp rajan explaining you through spv education world okay my dear friend see here the Vedic period has, we will see how the origin of Vedic people. There are several hypotheses that had been said about the, how the Vedic people had been originated in India. That we can see three hypotheses. It is said that through Indo-Aryan migration, actually we can see this India see map here. Some people had traveled from different places to India and it is assumed to be Indo-Aryan's migration or Indo-European migration or indigenous Aryans which means they had developed from the Sapta Sindhu region as Aryans. This is the concept or origin there are hypotheses but Indo-Aryans migration was most permitted hypothesis we can think and we shall see here origin of home of Aryans. Many say from where they had came many has their own ideological sharings. So if you see here Balagangadhar Tilak said that Indo-Aryans are from Okay, Aryans are from Arctic region and Swami Dayananda Saraswati, Saraswati said that they are from Tibet. Max Muller said that Central Asia is their main home and it is evident and it is proved with the base of Bogolkhoi inscription. Okay, Bogakhoi inscription, Bogaskoi. Okay, whatever the pronunciation, the nouns doesn't matter. For this, I will say in detail in a final uh, in this session last. So, there is a detailed explanation, sir. So don't worry about that inscription, okay? And the names of Vedic deities are also been similar, which means those followed in Central Asia and India has been similar based on the worship that had been their daily following. So, okay, now we shall see here Hersfeld's. He said that Indo, not Indo, okay, Aryans are originated from Turkestan. Also, J.C. Rod said that they are originated in bacteria. These are all the different sayings and different thoughts that had been proponed that Aryans are from uh, migrated from Central Asia, Arctic, and different hypotheses they had put forward. And there is no any clear evidences. There are many perceptions, my dear friends. Okay, now we shall see here. Vedic age is further divided into early Vedic age and later Vedic age. So if you see the early Vedic age, so it is from 1750 to 1000 BC, and later Vedic age is 1000 to 500 BC. There are major changes in these two eras. So this period is more more important. So be careful and understand both the divisions what are all the differences and how the way of life they had existed during the two vedic period so you must read it separately okay my dear friends we shall see here it is established early vedic age which was established along the sapta sindhwa region which means mostly along the indus and gangetic plains which means indus river so we shall see what are all the rivers related to it sindhu means it is called by, by other name of indus Vitastha is the other name of Jilam and Askini is the other name of Chenab. Purushni is the other name of Ravi. We can remember like this. Ravi is a male name, so Purushni. So next, Vipas means BS. This is also can be easily remembered. BS, Vipas. Okay, next. 
Satruji means Satudri. Shatudri means it's settlers and Saraswati. Now it has been lost in the sands of Rajasthan. But now our archaeologist has been re excavating those Saraswati river evidences. Okay, my dear friends, we shall see. Aryans are thought to be migrated from different places and also due to their migrations, the indigenous tribes called as Dasa or Dasyus has been moved on to different places, mostly South India. Thus use of phallus worshippers, male sex organ worshippers or Shiva followers, we can think as so. And also they introduced chariots and horses. See here, first Aryans are the people, those who introduced chariots and horses into India. This can be asked as a question such as who introduced chariots in India or horses to India. It is clearly shown that it is Aryans. Okay, and the early Vedic age we can see military conflicts. There are military conflicts during the early Vedic age. It is the battle of 10 kings. It is during the early Vedic age and it is between the Bharatas and led by chief Sudhas and against the confederation of 10 tribes which means 10 tribes are indigenous persons. These Bharatas are Aryans. They came and fought between them. So it is considered as battle of 10 kings. It is during the early Vedic period. And Bharatas and Purus merged into one form and it is the single tribe known as Kuru tribe. This is the combination of Bharatas and Purus. So remember this and we shall see here later Vedic period 1000 to 500 BC. What are we had seen is early Vedic age. Now we see a later Vedic age. It is a expansion. So it started some uh, hard times during later Vedic age and major changes has been evolving so what are all the changes iron access and iron has been invited so automatically the settlements has been expanding like anything because iron invented iron access means automatically they can clear the forest and they can move much faster and easily take over so it is seen through gangetic plains and western gangetic plains where they had been highly expanding themselves and also this vedic society is changed into a settled agriculture previously it is semi nomadic stone age it is completely nomadic and now during the indus valley civilization and those and those periods it was semi nomadic now it is completely changed into agriculture oriented lifestyle next we, we shall see here later vedic period they used mostly painted gray ware to for this or daily use okay remember this painted gray ware is used during later vedic period now we shall see here the society the most important thing how the society existed during the two eras it is a later vedic and early vedic see we shall see here in vedic society we are seeing early vedic society now if you come to the early vedic society they didn't fight for territories which means they are living a equal lifestyle so they don't have much greed so they did not fight for territories and also the tribes are called as vis which means vis is a name of tribes they call and all together they call they call them as vis there there was no varna system see now we had seen all the different varna system that is not present and also early vedic age is mostly patriarchal and patrilinear which means the father or male will be the head and the same thing continues to the further generations and also we shall see here three types of marriages has been existed during the early vedic period which means monogamy means only single woman they marry polygyny means they marry multiple women polyandry means a single woman marries a multiple men so this is the different times monogamy polygyny and polyandry and also there was a superstitious beliefs which means they think that with a uh, mantra and superstitions the diseases can be cured those things were believed during the early vedic age and there is no any no office of administrative justice so justice system and that was not much strict and it was a school society where everyone were equally treated and much lenience was provided to the societal perspective we shall see here status of woman if you come to the status of woman better than later vedic age early vedic age had a more importance to the woman in all the fields women were equal to men during the early vedic period and women could choose their husbands and could remarry. See, widows can also remarry if their husband has died or disappeared. And also both women sages also present. Not only male can become a sage and also female can become a sage. And female gods also been worshipped during that early Vedic period. Remember this, even now nowadays, present days, there is no possibility of female to become as a sages. But men can do anything he wants. These are all the restrictions which had started and believed after the later Vedic age 
and also women also allowed to study the vedas this is the most important thing even the present day vedas are restricted to men you can see here every temple wherever you go and you visit there are no women worshiping or doing puja these things which means mostly male dominated patriarchal society still will live but the early vedic age is a better example of egalitarian or women supportive society we can say that okay now we shall see the later vedic society the old tribes group to form as political units previously there was no political higher and lower powers they were equally treated but now it had been started developing into a larger political units monarchy has started their high preference chief crops are rice it is called as vrihi remember this rice is called as vrihi and wheat these both had become a chief crops and also war was fought for territories previously later early vedic age there is no fight for territories now everybody has become selfish and wars has started for the territories vidata completely disappeared vidata is a system of uh, like we can consider as true democracy where everyone can have ideas to share and discuss and decide this thing will be coming in a further classes so we shall wait and see and there is a uh, social boundaries had come up role status ritual purity everything has changed now we follow everything is based on the later vedic period my dear friends so you must be careful where we had learned these things and from where we had started to uh, exploit the people had started exploiting the people still kings did not possess yeah, even though in later vedic period there is wars fights everything but there is no any standing army because the maintenance will be high level and also there is a gotra exogamy which means they don't marry in the same uh, other gotras or same gotra so like that uh, they had different rules based on gotras society was divided into varna system which means they had divided several varnas for example we can see here brahmana brahmana means who is having the high position when this brahmanas got high position is by later vedic period only and they had a monopoly of priests which means priests rule the uh, country or people at that period which means they have high power and they ask the part of their territories everything as dakshina so they compel and get the dakshina and say that it is a gift to them so this was the perspective how they had evolved during that period and kshatriyas were the warriors or kings we can say vaishyas are the common people who are assigned to produce some functions which means mostly any of the economic activity business activity everything is done by the vaishyas mostly economic we can consider and shudras shudras are the untouchables are lowest category of people they had treated in the varna system and also during the all the three varnas which means except shudras everybody has entitled to uh, wear up upanayana upanayana means you can see the brahmans would be wearing a cross thread sacred thread along the shoulders and pass through the waist so that is called as a upan now we shall see here status of women during the later vedic period if you come to the status of women during the later vedic period it was bit worse which means the women was not allowed to participate in sabha previously they were participating in sabha now their participation has been reduced and they had restricted to the homes which means they had sent to the kitchens we can see what we are following nowadays and present days is just the thing that had come over from the beginning of the later vedic period okay all the women's function has been demarcated and, and it was shown that women must do only this purpose which means they must stay to the kitchen and they must not roam here and that they all the freedoms has been restricted to the greater extents and women are prevented from attending the rituals now also we can see that someone had dead means they won't allow women to the last end those rituals this is the belief we had following male dominance has increased though as a man power everything increasing male domination also has been increased as inferior and subordinate to women women had been just thought as a asset just as a things that we use daily uh, uh, daily day to day life and also we think uh, we are the owners of that like that women has been also treated okay now we see here friends in this society in later vedic period or uh, early vedic period how the marriages continue this is the most important topic you must see for any competitive exam my dear friends here asura vivaha means marriage by purpose a one person goes and purchases a woman and marries her so it is called as asura vivaha also arsa vivaha means for the bride like a dowry they not dowry they give a cow or bull and a bull the both things are given to them 
as a price for the bride then it is called as arsa vivaha brahma brahma vivaha means marriage of a girl with a boy of same varna which means same caste marriage with same rituals and everything for example nowadays we see in recent days also you can see brahma vivaha they used to say in our locality it means that the same caste same vedic rituals and everything they procedurally they get them married it is called brahma vivaha we can go for other types of marriages also it is up to our set of mind okay my dear friends we shall see here daiva vivaha which means father donates his daughter to a priest such a silly things you can see here friends for the priest a father donates her daughter as dakshina it seems it is called as daiva vivaha which means they are marrying the woman to the temple actually this is the thing in future has been developed as a devadasi system and also it had led to the prostitution in temple so it had many issues we'll see in day to day issues and topics okay my dear friends here gandharva vivaha means a pure love and swayamvaram will be happening so like love marriage is called gandharva vivaha prajapati vivaha means marriage without dowry which means you reject the dowry and go for prajapati vivaha so you can suggest your friends go for prajapati vivaha okay paishachi vivaha means you seduce a girl while she is sleeping or anything so you seduce her and marry her it is called paishachi vivaha rakshasa vivaha means you go and abduct a girl and run away and marry her so it is called as rakshasa vivaha these are all the types of uh vivahas or marriages during the vedic periods okay my dear friends these things are very very important so every part of this class is most most important so don't miss this class or skip this class it is you can also make this notes also okay now you shall see here friends different vedas during the vedic period every veda has its own importance what are all those importance we can see here rigveda rigveda is considered as the oldest religious text till now it is considered okay one of the oldest text is rigveda it is the oldest veda also it is composed during the 1500 to 1200 bce what are all the things that it had considered which means what are present in rigveda we can see here friends it has 10 mandalas 10 mandalas means it has overall 1028 1028 hymns which means small phrases like like poetic it will be there it is called as shuktas this has been asked many times so be careful it is called as shuktas and it has mandalas 2 to 7 mandalas and oldest part of the rigveda and it is also the shortest book okay my dear friends first and 10th mandalas is youngest one see here 2 and 7 are oldest 2 and 7 mandalas are oldest and 1 and 10 are youngest mandalas and also these are the longest books which means the youngest one or longest it had 191 shuktas present in it okay we shall see here mandalas means are the subdivisions a small books and subdivision of books you can see here and the mandalas are subdivided into shuktas also eulogies are rikas which means prizes or padas the following these are all the things present here ninth mandala has completely devoted to soma tenth mandala is purusha shukta it also mentions the varna system see here in rigveda mandala 10 is not present means today's varna system will not be present okay my dear friends so remember that 10th mandala of rigveda has the varna system to be cleanly detailedly explained rigveda has five branches to it what are it it is sakalya baskala aswal aswalayana sankhyana mandukya these are all the different five branches of rigveda we shall see here there are total mantras in rigveda you can consider it as to be 10600 mantras present in a rigveda okay we shall see here brahmanas of rigveda it is called as what are all the brahmanas in rigveda is kaus kaushitaki brahmana aitreya brahmana samakhyana brahmana these are all present in the rigveda so remember is aitreya brahmana has been most important many times it had been seen and it has importance when i deal with other topics i'll tell the importance of it now we shall see what are all the kaustik uh, kaushista ki aitreya and samakhyana remember these three important okay now we shall see here samaveda samaveda means sa re ga ma we see here which means it is a music so sa which means music samaveda means it is a melody it is a music we can consider it is sung as soma sacrifice which means as songs like it is sung by udgatris it has 1549 verses in it gandharva veda it is a sub veda or upaveda of samaveda 
Upaveda of Samavedas is Gandharva Veda. It is also part of Natya Shastra. Natya Shastra means you know it is about a dance form of we can see uh, Bharatanatyam. These things we, we can see it is a uh, dance form, traditional dance form. Okay, see here, friends. Brahmanas of Samaveda are Paisa, Chika Brahma, uh, Panchavish Brahmana, Jaiminiya Brahmana. Sadvish Brahmana. We should remember this separately, my dear friend. And this is most important for art and culture. So remember this. Ajur Veda. Ajur Veda is also a book of Advaryo priest. It is for the priest to follow the rituals, yagna. See, we can see here. You follow this yagna, you will get all your problems solved. You follow this yagna, this year you will get rain. These things are being dealt by many Brahmanas and people. So these are all fo followed just based on Ajur Veda books. And there are two main texts present in the Ajurveda. It is Sukla Ajurveda, Vajasaneini Ajurveda, which means Madhyadin and Kanva. It is also called Madhyadin and Kanva. It is also Krishna Ajurveda, Taitriya, Kataka, Maitriyani, Kapistal. These are the subdivisions of the text of Ajurveda. And what are all the Brahmanas present in Ajurveda? You consider it is Kastaka, Maitrayani, Kapilata Kata, Kapilata Kata. Taitriya. These are all the Brahmanas of Ajurveda subdivisions. Okay, my dear friends. Now we shall see here other Veda. Other Veda has it is the latest of four Vedas, which means the last one we can consider among the Vedas. It has three Vedas of different content and style. It is mostly of popular beliefs and superstitions, which means it is of controlling evil spirits and devil, these things we used to say no. Those things are dealt with Adarva Veda, which means they have something tantrics like controlling the evil spirits. Like this, or uh, this also we can see here. Some pujari in the movies you can come, you can see his priest will come and he controls the devils and this thing he finds the devil present or not. So these are all controlled under Adarva Veda. There are two divisions, Paipalada Adarva Veda, we can say, and Saunikaya Adarva Veda. It has 20 kandas, 711 hymns, and collection of 5987 mantras. Brahmanas in Adarvaveda is Gopata Brahmana. Remember only one Brahmana in Adarvaveda. It is Gopata Brahmana. Okay, now after this we have more important topics to be held on. Organization of the Vedic people. Vedic people are organized in hierarchical order, which means how the people lifestyle is organized. We can see from the family. Family is called as Kula. So who is controlling the family? Who is the head of the family is Grihapati. Father, male head, male oldest male will be the head. He is called as Grihapati. Village is called as Grama. It is led by Gramani. Clan, which means the religious group or one section of society, is called as Vis. Clan means tribal groups. It is called as Vis. It is led by Vispati, which means we can consider a village next to district like that. Improvements. And people of the tribe is called as Jana. And country is called as Rashtra. And now the ruler, they consider him as the Rajan. Okay, now friends, the chief of the tribe is called as a Rajan. The other name of him is Gopati Janasya. And duty of his, what is the duty of this Rajan? He protects the tribe and he takes care of the cattle that were present in their settlements. Okay, now Visa. Visa is a type of elections, which means election of the chief of the tribes is conducted by Visa. Now, Visa means you think it is going to the foreign country. During that time, it is different, my dear friend. Here, it is mentioned in the other Veda. So, Visa is clearly mentioned in the other Veda, Adarva Veda. Okay, now we shall move on to the further details of the governance difference during the Vedic period. How does the governance has been existed during the Vedic period? We must know it clearly. Here, you can see a king is moving and everybody guarding him. And here, the, you can see the true democracy. The person head of the village will be present here. Everybody discuss and decide and take the decision. So this is one sort of democracy we can consider. During the early stages of our Indian society, there are successful democracies where decision is taken by public interest. Okay, friends. Now we can see that in Switzerland. Vidata means tribal assembly. Vidata means tribal assembly. What are the different types of tribal assembly that are present? Sabha means every kin is based in assembly or selected by elders or nobles and women also actively participated in sabhas so it is equality to men so it was uh, they have idea to share with them so and also women participating in sabha is called sabhavati so remember this, sabhavati means women participated in the sabha and women was stopped attended assemblies later vedic period which means in later vedic see early vedic they had highly 
participating they were equal enough but when it comes to the letter vedic so they stopped completely participating in the sabhas sabha performs judicial functions that is the thing what i said earlier the decision making has been considered by the sabhas and we shall see samiti samiti is an assembly of group for transaction of business any business activities or decision making policy political businesses ceremonies prayers everything is been decided by samiti samiti never do judicial functions remember this sabha and samiti if they ask as a divisions you may get prelims or anywhere the simple changed topic can be asked samiti doesn't deal with judicial sabha deals with judicial that is the difference so and we can see here vidata vidata also women also participated in it gana is also tribal assembly one form of tribal assembly we shall see here defense and the supporters and how they were been supported we shall see what are all the details vrajapati means he had control over pasture land all the pasture land all the pasture land which means grazing lands has been controlled by vrajapati kulapa means head of the family gramina means military leader during the ayurvedic period but slowly he had been changed into the head of the village spasa means kai spy which means he goes to different places and gets the information and secretly maintains it and tells to the secret agencies dutas means envoys also police means ugras or jiva gribas madhyamasi means mediator see madhya means middle so mediator madhyamasi means he is a mediator and we shall see here how the economy of the vedic period existed there are two things we must see clearly the economy of the early vedic age was different and the economy of the later vedic age was completely different so we must study it clearly in different formats early vedic age the cattle were a medium of exchange we, they don't have money so if they need anything they exchange their cattle in the name of money so the person one who has more cattle will be wealth see here nowadays money is wealth so one who has more money he is wealthy in the same way those days they transact based on cattle so those who has more cattle is rich now also you can see friends you know we can we can go to the topic war was not for land war was mostly for the cows so it is called as gavisti so now we fight for land everything those days they fighted for cow animals okay now we shall see here wealthy person is called as gomat so gomat is the one who is wealthy person gifts were turned in the names of cows and women slaves see this is also the slave system was present in india those days so remember this is an example for that and private properties was not established which means everything was a public property everyone were equal during the early vedic age but now the later vedic age comes to the line so what are all the things we must know artisans or iron smiths there are different artisans developed by iron smiths potters dwellers everybody has got their prominence previously only the cattle breeders has their prominence now everybody has got their prominence based on the business that they do agriculture agriculture still was a main occupation wooden plow share has been developed and oxes has been used for uh, plowing and agriculture activities metals if you come to the metals iron was invented and iron is called as shama during the later vedic period this is where we can see the iron age and also krishna as yes krishna as is also the other name of iron that they used during that period also copper is called as lohit so what is it lohit means it is in the meaning of copper that is a metal name during the later vedic period money lending has become a common see here people have become a greedy aggressive everything has been changing women just confined to weaving even now we can see your mother sister everybody in villages they just have on machine and they stitch clothes mostly that is their restricted work that had been given to the women also taxes has been collected heavily land holdings has been common and battles cattle became movable property which means cattle is not a wealth as much in during the as in the early vedic age and also you can see satamana a piece of gold a piece of gold is called as satamana or nishka is the currency they used this is the most important question what is the currency they used means it is nishka along the battle zone they also followed the bata system but still they had a coins it is called as nishka as a exchange or currency we shall see the potteries they had during that period it had different potteries during the later vedic period it is black and red pottery black slip to wear painted gray wear mostly important painted gray was important during the later vedic or early vedic period it is bowls and dishes and also they used it for eating and rituals everything red wear is most popular during that period okay my dear friend 
now we have a vedic literature has several divisions into it the two divisions we can see that literature means written things everything it is shruti and smriti shruti means it is a sacred text and it is of divine origin and it is central to the hinduism so every hinduism it has shruti importance of it it is also believed that it is a cosmic sound of truth shruti means it is a truth it is a divine origin and it is heard and translated by rishis only the gnanis rishis only say about the shruti and these things in detail okay now we shall see here first source of dharma is shruti that is adharma uh, vedas and these things are considered as shruti so this is the first source of dharma now we shall see here smriti smriti means what simple thing whatever you remember whatever you think it is called as smriti so it is that which is remembered is called as smriti it is of human origin and auxiliary treatises of vedas and law books of indian society were also present and also all the vedas has been composed of 500 bc only so now the smriti is the thing you must remember every compilation every written thing that is remembered in your mind is called as smriti so that can only be produced as a book and come into our day to day existence so we are knowing about the lifestyle now four vedas you know rigveda yajurveda samveda other vedas everything we had seen and clear uh, each veda individual consists of samhita see what are all the present in the veda subdivided is samhitas brahmanas aryankas upanishads that is the subdivision of the vedas now we shall see upavedas upaveda means you gain just a knowledge it is just a technical verb but it is divided into many sub words upa means sub so in main vedas there is a sub vedas to be connected to it it is called as a upavedas so it is divisions are dhanurveda dhanur means archery so dhanurveda means it is archery gandharva veda means it is about music we had seen when you are seeing samaveda it is the upaveda of samaveda so upaveda of samaveda is gandharva veda shilpa veda is dealing with architecture now we are having btech b and different technical groups that we are following and even getting we are running jobless but during that period they had different systems shilpa veda gandharva veda dhanur veda ayurveda means which deals with the medicine such a crazy and superb lifestyle they had followed with well versed developed society okay now we shall see here what are all the things we must know okay we have only two slides over so wait and watch my dear friends the vedic composition if you come to the vedic composition samhitas we shall see here samhitas it is a collection of mantras and benedictions and vedas are often used to refer as samhitas so the subdivisions are there no this that is called as samhitas based on vedas and there are four vedic samhitas it is rigvedas yajurveda samveda adharveda you know that so we need not explain that in detail now we come to the brahmanas it is most important brahmanas has mostly commemorate the rituals ceremonies and sacrifices mostly they don't make this much public during that period so this is maintained as a secret that only brahmans must lay no other must know that secret secrecy was maintained and everybody believed them so it had created their upper hand in the domination of them has risen so this thing we can see the societal changes now we shall see here the vedic composition brahmanas are maybe either separate text or partly integrated with samhitas okay friends now we shall see here they also include in aryankas and upanishads we shall see here aryanka aryanka means the text that was written in forest is called as aryanka it is a third part of vedas it it has ritual ceremonies sacrifices symbols and many things are present there mostly this Uh, aryankas are wild in nature we can think like that and also there is two aryankas present chandogya aryanka and jaiminya aryanka and also it is composed meditated just by sages who go and meditate and learn things in forest and come and write books it is only mainly concentration on meditation and it is opposition to the rituals and sacrifice which we blindly follow even today okay friend now we shall see upanishad the most beautiful thing of vedic period is for me is upanishad when you read it it is a such a bliss that you will learn every part of life every meaningful things in the life just based on the upanishad so upani is called is it is a meaning that to sit down near someone upanishad means something i am giving to you when you sit near to me which means you sit near to the great person so he gives you upanishads vedas and these things he creates a knowledge it is just a meditation philosophy and spiritual knowledge it is called as upanishads and it is also known as vedanta the end of vedas so upanishads are after the vedas so it is considered as the end of vedas and it has 108 upanishads see how many verses are there in uh, that first 
Rigveda. So for Rigveda, there are thousand twenty eight. But in Upanishads, you see only thousand eight. But that is worth meaningful Upanishads, and it is during the ancient philosophical ideas has been uh, culminated in the Upanishads, and it has a less importance of ceremony, sacrifice, these things. So, so they, it is a really good thing if you consider our uh, traditional things. The one which had a equal preference and super thing is Upanishads, and Upanishads as uh, is a philosophical work and dialogue form. It had many natural philosophy questions and weight of the soul and mystic things, spiritual interpretation, Vedas. And one of the things you must remember, the motto, our nation's motto, Satya Me Vajayate, is taken from the Mundaka Upanishad. So remember this, Mundaka Upanishad, from that part only, our motto, Satya Me Vajayate, has been got. Okay, friends, now we shall see, we had come to the last part of our lecture, how the Vedic culture existing during that period. Vedic culture has kinship, which means the kings has started and their social structure has been divided. So upper, lower, society, lifestyle, everything has been slowly changing. Cloths were of, made of cotton, wool, animal skin. These are all the different types of cloths that they made and wear to protect themselves from all the uh, society or climate, everything. Okay, now we shall come here. Recreational activities. So now they are agriculturists, so they have more time. So they concentrate on recreation. Most recreation activities that we follow here is come from the later Vedic or Vedic period. Now we shall see a flute, uh, lute, which means veena, harp, cymbals, drums. Everything was played as a recreational. They used to dance, drama, chariot racing, gambling. Everything has been in a rice. Okay, now we shall see the settlements. Settlements is lived in mud settlements. Mostly the settlements are present in mud. The food, the food they use are everything is mostly milk products, grains, fruits, vegetables, uh, everything they had consumed in day to day lives. Now we shall see here inscriptions. What are all the inscriptions that were present? This is the thing I said, I will explain in the last slide. The Vedic, Vedic culture, the ideology we had got, and what are the evidence we had got is based on Bogas Koi inscription. It is found mostly in the Cilicia, Asia Minor, the capital of ancient Hittites. Okay, mostly Asian part, Central Asian part we can consider. From there, the Bogas Kui inscription evidence had provided much more evidences of the lifestyle of the Vedic people. The Vedic gods and goddesses has been described in the Bogas Kui inscription. The similarity is that there are the gods Indra, Varuna, Mitra, Na Nasatyas, which means Ashwins are mentioned in our Vedic lecture, uh, literature and the same thing is present in their culture and Bhagoskoi inscription. These are all the linkages which provide evidences that they are from the Central Asian migrants. Now we shall see here sites. If you come to the sites, Bhagwan Pura in Haryana is an important site where the evidences of painted grave sites and neither iron objects or cereals are found because it is a Early Vedic side, we can consider and 13 rooms were mud house and Punjab. If you come to the Punjab, mostly pre painted gray wear is mostly dominant and used. Okay, friends, thank you. Thanks for watching SPV Education World. Kindly like, share, and subscribe to your friends and everyone and support our channel. You can also donate to our channel to the growth of our channel. Also, uh, many are interested and in helping so that we can create a better change. So this is the concept we are learning here. We learn together, we grow together, we get better together. Okay, friends, this is your SP Rajan signing off. Thank you.